Thank you, Wendy. It is kind of exciting, this whole deacon thing. <laughs> I'm excited about it, and um, I'm learning a lot. So I want to say first, good morning. I'm really grateful to be here this morning. It's really great to see so many people I love and to think about all those who are with us virtually as well. But I want to start out with a confession. So I have been praying and studying, reflecting and contemplating on what the message from the Lord is for us today. And all I can hear is, where can we go where God is not? I confess that I am on a journey, and I haven't seen God much on my journey lately, at least not yet. But I really want God to show up. In that sense, I've been thinking about our individual and collective journeys, the places we've been, the places we're going. And I suspect that all of us are deeply aware of our own life journeys. Some of us are lonely, some afraid, some joyful, some at peace. Many of us are trying to get away from something, pain, loss, suffering, past brokenness. Some are trying to get through something, periods of difficulty and challenge. But others are trying to get to something. Maybe it's meaning or purpose, a new job, a new relationship, or just answers to life's most important questions. Some are fleeing. Some are arriving. Yet what we share in common is that all of us are on a journey. And we all need God to just show up. Our first scripture reading today tells us that Jacob also was on a journey. You might recall the story. Jacob and his mother, Rebekah, colluded together to deceive Isaac in order for Jacob, the younger son, to receive Isaac's blessings and the rights of the firstborn before Isaac died. <clears throat> when his brother Esau found out, he burned with anger toward Jacob. So Rebekah devised an escape plan. With his father's blessing, Jacob was to leave to find a wife, but he was really fleeing his brother Esau. And so he did. He left Beersheba, and he journeyed toward Haran. He left the comfort and familiarity of his home to a completely unknown place, from the anger and dismay of his father and brother to the fear of the future. As stated by the rector of the Episcopal Church in that town called Valde in Texas, Jacob was a wanted man, not just by Esau, but ultimately by God. Jacob's journey is not just about his physical survival, but he is running for his spiritual life as well. You see, it is in the midst of Jacob's journey, in the wilderness of Beersheba, sleeping with his head on a rock, that God showed up. Jacob has this deep and powerful dream of a stairway to heaven with angels ascending and descending. And at the top of the stairs, God declares, I am Jehovah, the God of Abraham and of your father Isaac. That ground you are lying on is yours. So God pronounces his truth that Jacob will have many descendants covering the entire land from the east to the west, north to south, and that all nations of the earth will be blessed through Jacob and his offspring. So today in this place here in Grace Church, I declare that this prophecy from that time, from that dream, is fulfilled in our midst. Because we indeed have been blessed with the knowledge of God through the life of Jacob's descendant, Jesus. You see, it was quite the dream that he had. Angels going up and down, seeing the gates, of that beautiful place, knowing that God is in that place, and hearing the promise that God will be with him constantly. But when he woke up, he was actually afraid. He exclaimed in terror. It was terrifying. But he says, God lives here. I've stumbled onto his home. This is the awesome entrance to heaven. The next morning, he anointed that rock in which he had slept, and he named it that place Bethel the house of God. You see, Jacob experienced God in the midst of his journey. God interrupted his plans. He showed up unexpectedly. I need God to show up like that. That's what I need in my life. 
The psalmist David gives us great insight into where God is along our own personal journey. Remember that the psalms are the prayer books of the people. Let's read the intimacy of Psalm 139. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You discern my thoughts from afar. You trace my journeys and my resting place and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it altogether. You see, like Jacob, God searched for and found the psalmist. The original Hebrew language here implies that God initiated that move. He was the one searching. And it describes it using a word that means boring or drilling deep, trying to find precious minerals or water. So we can properly infer that the Lord our God is making a special effort to search and know us, including the tiniest details of our being. You see, God the Creator longs to be with us in our journeys. You see, today, with today's technology, maybe that's not so strange. With my phone, my family knows exactly where I am. They know exactly what I've been doing, right? It doesn't seem odd that someone might monitor our location and our activities. But for the psalmist, and for most of human history, tracing my journey and my resting place, or even being acquainted with all my ways, was physically impossible. But the Lord our God knows us so well that there's not even a word that we can utter, or even think about speaking that he is not already intimately aware of. Yahweh knows not just what the psalmist expresses in words, but also the very thoughts of his mind. Nothing is hidden. You see, we human beings long to be known. We long to be loved. And there's nothing more powerful than being known and loved, right? We want to be surrounded and embraced. The psalmist felt God's embrace. You press upon me behind and before, and you lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge for me is too wonderful to bear. It's so high, I cannot attain to it. On our journeys, perhaps we are seeking for God, to find him, to know where he is, and to experience his presence. Or perhaps we're seeking to run away from God, to find a place where he is not. But we see in the psalm, our God is everywhere. Here we go. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I climb up to heaven, you are there. If I make the grave my bed, you're there too. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand holds me fast. If I say, surely the darkness will cover me, and the light around me turn to night, darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day. Darkness and light are just the same to you. So that question, where can we go where God is not? Elijah searched for God in a whirlwind, but found him in a whisper. Jacob found him in his dreams. Moses in a burning bush. Mary Magdalene looked for him in a tomb, but found him standing behind her. <laughs> I've been searching for God to show up in the midst of my own journey, to do miracles, to send angels up and down that ladder for me, to wake me up from my sleep and give me the answers, to tell me he is here and has a plan for my life. I've been searching and seeking, but God hasn't shown up because he is already here. As part of the diaconate process, we've been studying spirituality from different times and places. The Celtic spirituality values that dignity of nature and creation, the community and the ordinary, and the poetic imagination that sees God in the very rhythm of daily life. The quiet earth would reflect God's peace, and the river proclaims God's goodness. Each action of the day from rising to setting of the sun becomes the very essence of prayer and his presence. You see, the Celtic believers saw God in every detailed task of the day, and he, he and she proclaimed it as God's goodness. 
I'll read you a couple of prayers from that time. There is no plant in the ground but is full of God's virtue. There is no form in the strand, but it is full of God's blessing. There is no life in the sea. There's not a creature in the river. There's not anything in the firmament that does not proclaim God's goodness. I will kindle my fire this morning in the presence of his holy angels of heaven. You see, in the tradition, the Celtic people, and many of us know that tradition because the Iona prayer comes from that place. They prayed for every little thing in their day. They blessed everything they went through throughout the day, their work and all that they did. There are prayers for the farmer going out to sow the seeds, the weaver at the loom, the fisherman, the milkmaid. Even the tools of our work become holy if we bless them and dedicate them to God's purpose. I'll read you another little prayer. Bless, O God, my little cow. Bless, O God, my friend. Bless thou my partnership and the handling of my hand. You see, ours is a call to recognize and proclaim the sacredness of all things. It is to experience a joyful freeing of the spirit when we trust that everything is encircled and encompassed with God's presence. You see, I'm on that journey. I know where I've been, but I don't know where I'm going. Like Jacob, I'm coming from a familiar place to a complete unknown, from a world of difficulty, anger, and dismay to an uncertain future. Like the psalmist, today I'm proclaiming trust in the journey itself and belief that there's no place where I can go where God is not. Like the Celts, I'm learning to recognize God in the rooster's crow, the flower's scent, the sun's warmth, and the blessing of my daily tasks. So at this point this morning, I fell apart. <laughs> Those in the service, I couldn't even speak. The, the, the depth of my pain and the depth of the life's journey that we're going through, it was hard. I'm trying not to do that now. And what I would say is, no matter where you are in your journey, whether it's from something, through something, or to something, the many twists of turns of life. I invite you to know there is nowhere you can go where God is not. In the midst of the journey is where God shows up. It is when we open our eyes to God's creation and bless everything along the way that we find his very essence, the holy presence of God in our midst. It is God who initiates and seeks us out to love us along the journey and to remind us there is nowhere we can go where God is not. Amen.